A lifelong teacher and Cherokee national treasure, Danny McCarter is a name synonymous with the Cherokee blowgun. Weaving through a cane break, he tells us the importance of helping others and listening to our elders. My name is Danny McCarter. My name is pretty synonymous with the blowgun. I mean, I've been doing it for oh, 30 years and I've taught a lot of classes, showed a lot of people. And so really, um, most people know me as a blowgun maker. I was uh, born and raised here in Tahoe, Oklahoma. I, mean, I always tease people, you know, this is God's country, you know, this is the only place where heaven touches the earth, you know, is, is Tahoe. I work at the Cherokee National History Museum. We share the culture with the people who come, uh, the visitors who come. Yeah, Cher Cherokees are big on stories. You know, my, my whole life's one big story. The reason I do things is because of the stories I'm told. People always ask me, you know, well, why do you have so much patience when people ask you to do things? And when I was a little kid, my Aunt Fanny, when she taught me how to tie my shoes. And so when I got sent to school at that time, um, nobody knew how to tie their shoes but me. But I, I would spend almost my whole recess tying people's shoes. I mean, because they'd come up and tie my shoe, tie my shoe. So I think that's kind of where I developed that, you know, got to help somebody. I started working in the ancient village in 1980, and I wanted to be the blowgun guy because that's what William Cabbage Head did. And I, I was kind of young at that time, so they said, well, you know, we make you a tour guide. I give tours, I, I talk to people, I, I give them stories, and, uh, but uh, shooting the blowgun for people, again, like I said, that that it's really so amazing to small, small children. I mean, you know, you just poof, and you shoot that gun, and when that dart hits that, that target, you know, uh, them kids will just, wow, you know, and that that's always amazing. That always makes you feel good. It was a family place. I mean, my kids worked here. Uh, talk to people that are my age, they'll always tell you, oh, well, I had an aunt, I had an uncle, I had a, you know, cousin that worked in the village. They always had that motto, you know, to teach, preserve, promote Cherokee history and culture. And that's what they've done. If you spend enough time here, you will. I mean, it's just fall in love with the place. It's, I mean, it, it really makes an impression on you when you come here. A lot of our Cherokee National Treasures, that's where a lot of them got their craft, was working in the village. I myself, I've learned from a lot of different people. You know, William being one of them, uh, Jess Ossowee being another, uh, Scott Ratcliffe, uh, the man I worked with at the uh, Heritage Center. Uh, he had a lot to do with the with my outlook on, on you know, River Kane. All those guys are Cherokee National Treasures. In a sense, though, Cherokee National Treasures are people who pass along their information. See, it's like they're gone now, but I'm still remembering the things that they taught us. So um, that's where it never really uh, goes away. I'm a member of the Thistle Society. Now, the Thistle Society is like a People who have won the Cherokee National Holiday, they'll give you a pin. The first blowgun shoot I shot in, they was like 1979, I think. And at that time, William Cabbage Head was probably the best shooter. So there were probably a dozen or so of us shooting, and everybody wants to win. That, you know, that's the competitiveness of it. But, you know, uh, everybody laughing, having a good time, you know, and, and it's always a, really a camaraderie when you do the blowgun. It kind of went around in circle, you know. I, I won a few times, a few years. Uh, Chester would win, Jess would win. Cabbage Head, he won a lot of uh, blowgun shoots over the years. And uh, different people, you know, get in there and win. And so it, it's, it's a lot of fun. And a blowgun is really something that everybody falls in love with, that's something they want to do, you know. Uh, and so I've taught a lot of people, you know, how, and the thing about the blowgun, uh, it's a simple weapon. I mean, you know, I can teach anybody how to burn out a blowgun or straighten one out in a day or two, you know, but the darts, you know, the darts, that's the art part of it, I mean. Because even me, after all the darts I've made, Every now and then I'll mess up. I taught a class here at the Heritage Center one time and a guy came all the way from Louisiana just to take the class. You know, 
because he'd seen some of my videos. That that always kind of uh, made me feel good because, you know, the sense of pride that somebody has when they make a blowgun in the dark and they shoot it, you know, it's like, you know, they really accomplished something. Then I taught, you know, you just hold it. hundreds of people. And so out of those hundreds of people that I taught, there'll be people that will teach other people how to do it. Being named the Cherokee National Treasure is something that I will uh, hold near and dear to me for as long as I live. I mean, um, I, it really feels good to be in the company of, of all the people I've talked about. You know, th those are all people that I grew up with, all people that, that I know that are gone now. Um, but they're not gone. I mean, they'll always be remembered. There's always uh, something that they've done. That, that, and I'm hoping that, you know, people will feel the same way about me, you know, uh, when my time comes, you know, they're, they're going to say, well, you know, Danny McCarter, he's pretty good this, this and that, you know, and that's what I want to, that's what I want to uh, be remembered by. I've always tried to represent the Cherokees uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, my mom, though, always put things in perspective because she said, you know, always tell me, don't be proud of what you are. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of the way you treat people. Like I said, River Cane is, is one of the most one of the most important things to the Cherokees. I think that's one of the reasons why the, the Cherokees uh, model themselves after the River Cane is because I could pull this, I could dig this plant up. I can take it somewhere and transplant it. And the thing about it, it's gonna grow. It's gonna prosper. Before long, there'll be more cane coming up. We wanna grow, we wanna prosper. And that's what we've done, you know, for the last 200 years.